Hi, welcome to The Gamesplainer. I'm Jeff The Gamesplainer and today I'm gamesplaining City of Gears. So, City of Gears is a two to four player game. It's put out by Grey Fox Games, who you may remember as the company that did Champions of Midgard. I, I appreciate Grey Fox Games and what they put out. I find personally that the games they're putting out are a little bit lighter than I necessarily want but with a little bit more rules than I necessarily want. Um, it's the small minutiae rules is what kind of catches me on their games. And look, that, that's not a problem. It's just something that I've noticed within the more modern, modern games is just an ease of getting things to the table is tending to be the thing that companies are looking at. So City of Gears, it's a steampunk themed game. Uh, you are in a spot and you need to put cogs to join yourself onto the factory and then join rooms of the factory together. You can move robots along each of the lines of where you have the cogs. And in essence, you're rolling the dice to be able to do that. Now, this is one of the issues I have with this game to start with is the actual reading of the rules and then getting to the table, they don't quite balance because in the rules, it kind of says everything you need to do. But on the first turn, you can't do everything. You actually can't do this stuff. I did not read anywhere in the rules that you can't do it on the first turn. And so I'm looking at going, but I need to be able to do that, but I can't do that. And there's, it's, I know that's a really superficial kind of fine detail finicky thing, but in just purely reading the rules and trying to get it to the table, if you don't understand it, what's going to happen is you go, oh, I'll go to another game and kind of get my head around that. And that's what's happened to this one. It's been on my shelf for a little while, just kind of staring at me going, play me, play me. And I've read the rules and it's play me, play me. And eventually I got to, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got it to the table. I'm glad that I, I did the game's play for it. But I found that having that little issue of, I roll the dice and then I can do something with the dice to do these things in the rooms and then any dice I've got left over I can use to move guys or open up new rooms but not actually being able to do anything in rooms because rooms don't exist yet. I've, I find that just a little taxing on the brain. I know that sounds really, it really does sound silly, but it's a little thing and it's a little detail. And I really wish that companies would put into their rule books, you're not gonna be able to do this on first turn. Yeah, there's a couple of, of games that I've got that have, have said that and said, okay, so on the first turn, jump straight to this. And that's great, I really appreciate that because you're not left there kind of looking at going, but I can't do that, I wanna do that, I can't do. Anyway, that's that's my one gripe with this game. The other thing with this game is they have put in a element of take that. Now, the game itself isn't a take that game. It doesn't need to be a take that game. You're moving robots from your home base into the factory. The thing that you can't do on the first turn, but you can do from future turns is if you have the appropriate goods or resources, you can use those resources to do the thing that is written on each room in the factory. A beautiful moment is if you use this room, any room that you are connected to, you can get a bonus off that room. So it actually kind of pushes you towards joining up things and, and being able to actually use those extraneous bonuses that are written at the top of the cards. I really appreciate that, I really like that. But if you, there's, there's, a, there's a little ruling, if you have, a, it's called a zap, it's a picture of a lightning bolt on the die. So you've rolled the dice, you might have a couple of zaps or you might not. If you have some zaps, you can use one of those zaps to send an opponent's robot back to their starting position, or you can spend two zaps to remove an opponent's linking connection thing. Uh, I don't really like that. I don't really use that. I personally don't use anything in those games that has that kind of take that thing when it's not necessary to the game. Yes, I will play games that have take that and, and where things like that are built in. There's not a whole bunch on this shelf that actually has that. I'm willing to use it. I'm not against that, but I don't quite get my head around when you've got a game that doesn't necessarily need any take that, where suddenly you're doing some take that, and I don't really know why. Um, 
So I think that I fear that if I play with a certain group, they'll go straight into that and think it's a war game and, and go after each other with the take that's. And I've, I'll be interested to see how that all lands out and plays out with, with that way of playing. But I also think that I'm a Care Bear player and I play with a heck of a lot of other Care Bear players and I fear that we probably won't use the take that that often. I, I wonder how different those games will be. I haven't played with those two vastly different groups, but I wonder how much that will play into it. Now, I have done the playthrough as a three-player game. The two-player game, the three-player game, the four-player game, they don't actually have that much difference between them. The only games I've personally had with other people are two-player games. I wanted to see how much difference having a three-player game would be. And I think this is one of those games that actually works better at the higher player count. Sure, it works fine at the two-player, but you tend to not fill up spaces on the board that are with kind of both players. And so you end up, that whole take that doesn't really play into it that much because you're not on the same tiles anyway. Uh, you can be, don't misunderstand me, but you tend to just, the way that the board game is set up, you tend to not actually overlap with where you're playing that often. Whereas on the three player, I found that the players were actually crossing paths a bit more and I'm assuming on the four player it'd be even more than that. And so I, f I feel that having a four player game of it would actually lead into that usage of the zap dice a little bit more, would lead into a, a co combination stuff happening uh, with where you're actually placed on the board. A couple of other really funky little things with this game that the one of the sides of the die is a picture of a gear. And whenever you get a gear, you're able to pull gears out of a bag. Uh, you're only able to use two of them maximum on the turn. doesn't matter how many you pull out. You could pull four out and only be able to place two of them. The other two would go back into the bag. That's really fine. The gear can be used to join two rooms together so you've got access to new rooms. Or there's the other side that has a little rule on it and you can add on to your board. And that rule lasts for then the rest of the game for just you, not for everyone else. And I, I quite like that. I find that a, a, a nice little quirkiness thing where you, 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 you're thinking, oh, which one of these am I more likely to use? Which one of these is probably more appropriate for me? Which one's going to get me more points at the end of the game? All those issues, all those question marks are coming into your head as you kind of decide which ones to use. Uh, and I, I quite like that. I quite, I quite like the, the way that plays. But I find that with this game overall, the usage of these rules down the bottom, the usage of the crossing over paths rules and things like that, then they're not really a huge part of the game. The usage of the zap, they're not really a huge, huge part of the game. The, as I say, you're rolling dice to see what things you get. Only one of the six sides is a zap. The clouds and the clouds which allow you to move and the gear tokens which allow you to take more gears, they make up the rest of the die with some of the sides being either or. And you get to choose which ones you go for. The, I, it's, it's probably the right balance for, for the game, but you end up then not seeing the lightning bolt come out that often, which is probably a good thing. Um, because the other way you can use lightning bolt is to move to any room that you're connected to. And so you could use a lightning bolt to get from here to way over there. And that's really cool, really cool when that happens. Um, the other good thing that this game has is a store of, of sides. So if you have rolled a whole bunch of gears, but you only want to use two of them, you can store a token that has the gear down on your board. You can only store one of each with one extra something. There is a token of movement, which is the same as the cloud one, but they're not on the dice. The only way to get them is via things that are happening in the factory, in these boards. They will get you these, these movement tokens, and then you can give as many movement tokens as you like. So you end up just kind of collecting those movement tokens when you happen to get onto them. And the happen to get onto them is, that's probably the essence of this game, that I happened to do that. Yes, there's a lot of decision that will go into it when you're deciding which of your factory boards you're going to actually action, and they're going to most likely cost you dice or tokens for dice sides to be able to action that. 
But the further into the game you go, the more you're going to want to do that because you'll be able to get those subsidiary actions of the ones next to it. So if, if for example, you can get the middle board and have connection to each of the other sides, you can actually do the action on the middle board and have the little bonus thing that's happening at the top of each of the other sides as well. There is a lot of little stuff going on with this game. There is a picture on the back of the rule book that says what each of the little things is, but there is not a description of what each of those things are. So for example, development, you need to either remember what that means or you need to scan through the rest of the rule book to find where it says anything about development to be able to use that. And it's, it's another little gripe of mine of, of just, just putting a word underneath an icon. Sure, that's fine, but I need to know what that word actually means and be able to find that really quickly and really easily when I'm playing. So look, I, it, it's a bit of a mixed bag on this one, to be honest with you. I think that this is a, a fun game to play, but it's a little bit funky to get onto the table, a little bit cringy, a little bit crunchy of remembering all the little detail stuff. Uh, I will leave that there, however. Please go ahead and watch my Gamesplain Gamesplanation to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any games that you would like to be Gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm Gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.